Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and 1st edition Charizard. Ooh, pack one, pick one, open Tovalar. If there's ever an incentive to draft red-green, this is it. Other good cards include Rise of the Ants, especially in blue-green. Get some of those eccentric farmers and other ramp cards. And uh, that card can be great. And then there's Consider for blue-red spells mostly. So I'll take a Tovalar. Is it a trap? A little bit. Red-green is one of the weaker archetypes for sure. But that doesn't mean you can not uh, build a good werewolf stack if you get the cards for it. If everyone else is drafting blue-black and blue-white and black-white, then uh, a red-green one is for the taking. I'm by no means committed to this uh, first pick. Second pack is pretty weak. Probably just gonna rare draft the uh, mythic land here. If I wanted to take a card for the deck, Howl of the Hunt can be good if you have enough werewolves. And then Lunar Frenzy is an okay trick. Outside of red green, there's nothing super exciting. Maybe like a Siege Zombie for blue black. Eh, I'll just take the final hostel for my playset. Well, there's a couple cards here. Um, Organ Hoarder jumps out. Has a great blue card. There's two decent uncommons in their respective archetypes. I mean, Ambusher really has to be in Black Red Vampires. Dawn Guard is a bit more flexible, but gonna be at its best in like a red white creature aggro deck. But yeah, I think Organ Hoarder might just be the best card overall, the most flexible, splashable. If I really wanted to stick to red green, I would probably take Harrier, followed by Evolving Wilds with a distant third Snarling Wolf. But, I mean, if I'm gonna get past the third pick Organ Hoarder, I'll take it. And then... Now... There's a couple two mana wolves. Harrier and Pestilent Wolf are both fine. In blue, there's a counter spell. Flip the switch. I'm not super high on the counter spells, to be fair. Duel for Dominance could be okay, but also not a card I want to pick highly. Yeah, nothing really jumps out. Maybe I should take Harrier and then hope to wheel like a Pestilent Wolf for Duel for Dominance. And then... I mean, I guess Wolf can set up a blue-green deck, which is maybe going to be more open than blue-red, but getting a fifth pick Moonrager Slash is an excellent sign. So definitely taking that. And then we'll see if we in the blue-red, red-green... Maybe splashing a third color. Bird Admire, probably the pick here. Good defensive werewolf. Red green struggles against flyers. And it's a werewolf, so. Hopefully, we'll get another Harrier later. Alright, so. So far, so good. Shadow Beast Siding, just a fine four mana play. We are seeing a lot of Vampire cards, 2nd Ambusher, 2nd Hungry for more, Stinger's good in Vampires, but I'm happy sticking to red-green. So, yeah, the Organ Hoarder might have been a slight distraction, but again, it's not like we gave up any good red-green cards in that pack. Another Bird Admirer. Do want to be on the lookout for things we can do at instant speed to make it easier to switch to nighttime. Uh, nothing here that I want, but I guess I'll keep cutting off red and green. Okay, we wheeled Howl of the Hunt, so glad I rare drafted over it. 
So this is an excellent way to pass a turn, let it flip to night time and then maybe set up a nice ambush. And Harrier even wields, so yeah, we didn't miss out on anything by taking Hoarder and Hostile. So yeah, Red Green seems open. First pick Tovalar, so just gotta hope to open more good werewolves. Tovalar draws cards with both regular wolves and werewolves, so the Harrier also synergizes with it. This is a beast and not a wolf, but still a good card. Don't know if I'll play the Rejuvenator. Gets better the more expensive flashback cards we have in the deck. Alright, let's see what pack number two has to offer. Well, the Celeste is actually not a bad way to transform it to night time. While letting us loot as well. So I don't hate it in this deck. We'll get better if we pick up more 5 mana werewolves. Then there's also the Weaver as a good reach creature, although we already have double bird admirer. Revivals, a decent value card for the late game. And then I'm hoping to wheel Bounding Wolf, which no one else should be interested in. Also a good way to let it switch to nighttime and still have a relevant play. But I'll try the Celestis here. And then we'll be on the lookout for more 5 mana werewolves. So we can curve Celestis into... A 5 drop on turn 4. Mm, let's see here. Slogurk, not particularly exciting. There's an eccentric farmer, which is just a good 3 drop. Not going to be incredibly synergistic in red green werewolves, but it's still a good card. It's essentially a 2 for 1. Or I could take a pestilent wolf if I'm maybe worried about my curve and want an extra 2 drop, which is also a reasonable argument here. Yeah, I guess I'll take the wolf over the farmer. Try to keep it a little bit more synergistic and hopefully we get paid off with more wolf synergies. But mostly worried about my curve. Third pick, Moonrager Slash is great. So we're seeing a bit of blue-green being open, but happy being red-green so far. Yeah, I would love to get to you on common to drop that uh, can transform and pump our wolves. And then some of the uncommon 5 mana werewolves. Yet another root coil creeper, another farmer and infiltrator. So infiltrator is the werewolf, farmer is the better card. So I don't have a ton of necessarily payoff cards for wolves at the moment outside of Tovalar. Infiltrator does play well with the Celestis too but I think I still prefer Farmer. It's just a nice 2 for 1 most of the time. It's gonna feel bad if I mill a powerful werewolf because I don't have any real ways of getting them back. Now this is a stacked pack for us. I think I'm gonna take the play with fire, although Burn the Accursed is tempting. There's a Tarlos Hauler, which I wouldn't mind, and a Duel for Dominance. I think both red cards are better than Duel. I think Hauler's still more replaceable than the removal. And then do I want a removal that's more expensive or the cheaper? Maybe Burn is actually better. Because the thing with Play With Fire is if I cast it alongside another card in the same turn, it potentially switches back to Daytime, which we don't want. So having the more expensive instant might be better, because in turn 5 I can pass, transform all my werewolves and still... Cast an expensive Burn the Accursed. Here it's between Frenzy and Dominance. I think I want Frenzy. We have a relatively low curve, so we'll be attacking into larger creatures sometimes, which is where having the Frenzy is going to be great. Duel's better if we have more beefy creatures ourselves to fight with, which is not currently the case. I'm not a huge fan of the Purifying Dragon, but Given our lack of other 5 mana creatures, I might still take it and play it. Not really a Voldaren Stinger deck. Bramble Armor could make the cut, but is also not exciting. I'll try the Dragon. And... I'll try an Immolation, I guess. 
not really into Pank's Betrayal. Alright, we wield both the Revival and the Wolf. Kind of liking the Revival now, giving us a bit more late game. Plays well with the Eccentric Farmer as well. But I wouldn't have minded the Bounding Wolf. Already have a few Reach creatures with the Burden Mire. So, yeah, second pack was okay, not great. Picked up an extra Moonrager Slash. Couple other removal spells. Just uh, missing a few of the werewolf synergies. Nothing here, uncommon for the vaults. Most of my creatures are green. Alright, last big duel for Domins, basically. Alright. 3 for 3 on Moonrager Slash. Sign me up. Rise of the Ants could be good, but we're not really ramping in this deck, so... It's more of a blue-green thing. Alright, can we get some nice werewolves? Village Watch versus Ruffian. Probably take the Watch. Should be able to wield the Ruffian. Also an Evolving Wilds. Right, don't mind the Burly Breaker, there's also Cathartic Pyre. Another great card. Hmm. I already have Triple Moonrager Slash, so I think I would rather have the powerful 5 mana Werewolf over another Burn Spell. But uh, yeah, Pyre would be great too. Ooh. Bloodthirsty Adversary. Surprised that's still here, fourth pick, just as a nice shiny mythic. Sadly made my playset like two days ago. Yeah, I'll take it. I mean, Burn Curse would be fine, but with all the um, Moonrager slashes we have, this is going to be a great play on turn five. And then now I'll probably take Infiltrator. Festival Crasher would not be terrible in my deck, but also not amazing. Ooh, there we go. Six big naturalist at long last. This card is awesome for us. Would play as many of these as I can get. Alright, keep them coming. <laughs> One more pack left. Can we make it 3 for 3? So we were in the right colors if we get Naturalist this late. Just didn't open any of them sooner. I'll take a play with fire. So happy I took the Burn the Curse the first time around. Didn't think we'll have room for Cavalry, but I'll take it just in case. Alright, wield the Ruffian. So I think we ended up with a decent deck, especially with those late Naturalists. Definitely improved our deck significantly. A nice late Burn the Cursed. So let's build this pile real quick. Probably don't need Immolation at this point. I uh, don't think I need Perforator. Rejuvenator, I can take it or leave it. Probably cutting the dragon now that we have more 5 mana plays. Alright, so this is 44. Don't think I can cut any of the 2 drops. Yeah, the 3 seem fine. How much flashback do we have? Siding, Revival. Not sure if I'm playing the Dryad's Revival. It does give us a little bit of late game. Although, let's see, I do have a couple mana sinks with the Celestus, Harrier, Shadow Beast Siding. 
So I don't think the the drying survival is really necessary. Farmer still seems good enough to keep just as a 2-3 that draws a land basically. But um, I'm thinking maybe cut the Rejuvenator since her curve's not incredibly high. And then maybe the Revival. And then... Duel for Dominance is also not at its best here since I don't have a ton of huge creatures. And I already have a lot of burn spells. So I think I prefer triple slash double burn as opposed to dual. And then we have two comma tricks basically between Howl and Frenzy. Four cheaper burn spells, two more expensive ones should be enough removal. And then I don't want to mess too much with the amount of creatures in the deck. I think the Admirer is necessary because we're pretty weak against flyers otherwise. And it does flip into a 3-5, which is pretty beefy still. Could see cutting Farmer. The thing about Farmer is that it's just an individually powerful card, even if you don't have a ton of synergy with it. A 2-3 that most of the time draws a land. But that being said, it's not like my curve goes super high that I need all those land drops. It just increases our consistency. And it can also mill something for adversary, so that's another small synergy. Anyway, I can get away with 16 lands, because I do have double naturalist that makes mana too. And then farmer can find land, so it's kind of like we're playing 16 and a half lands plus Celestus makes mana too. Yeah, you know what, let's play 16. I think I have enough ways to generate mana that I can get away with it. A relatively even split between red and green in the end. Yeah, the the only thing that concerns me about 16 lands is that we do have 4 or 5 drops. But again, we we do have ways to generate more mana. And then, yeah, 8 and 8 split. Might run into some issues not drawing the right colors of mana. So I would have liked an Evolving Wilds or two, but what are you going to do? Yeah, sure. Not the perfect curve, but a hasty turn to adversary, perhaps. And now our curve is looking a lot better. Burn the Accursed, especially useful against blue-whites, because it can exile a creature so they cannot disturb it. I think I'm happy to trade Adversary. And then we can maybe play a hasty village watch. Alright, so this attack sort of implies the plus three and indestructible on a human. Which I don't have to play into here. Now of course it will still be available in their hands, but possible I can punish it with a burn the accursed. Alright, right, play with fire is not bad. So now going for hasty village watch is probably not going to work out. Probably just attack, see what happens, and then maybe interfere with play with fire. I'm okay trading adversary for any of these. If this transforms, there's nothing in the graveyard to get back. But it's definitely holding something. So it's most likely that comma trick we mentioned. Sure. Yeah, 
fine trade. And then probably keep the play with fire around. I'll have to take two from the apparition because playing it pre combats means they can use a pump spell successfully. And then I would take more damage. I mean, I don't have to play it now. Next turn I could play Village Watch and have play with fire. That seems pretty strong. Although I guess I would be trading for Sanctifier here. Hmm, so I'm probably not attacking with the Village Watch then. But I can attack with the other two. Yeah, so probably should not have played Village Watch pre combat if I wasn't attacking. Although I guess on the flip side, if tapping out makes it more likely to play the pump spell, then I guess we got our value here. Uh-oh. Well, a good thing we still have our burn spell here. Any merit for letting it transform to night time and then killing Lisa? Then I don't get to attack. If I attack with everyone, like sure they could double block the village watch, but that's fine. And then next turn I can flashback sighting. I think I still flashback siding. Kind of surprised they're trading because they can enable Coven next turn. So if they want to be aggressive, they could tap main phase, but I don't think they're going for it. Interesting. They didn't use a tamper, they just attacked. So did they draw another Flare of Faith? This would bump it up to a 6-5. So even if I howl, it wouldn't be enough for it to win the trade. So I think I still got a block. Alright, a ritual, that's fine. This is just a trade. All right, I guess it only untaps werewolves, does it? Well, let's move to combats. Pwn's gonna tap, we'll hit for two. Play wolf. Yeah, it's possible I should not have attacked with the village watch a couple turns ago and let it transform to night time instead. There we go. Well, if our opponent keeps drawing lands, we can win. Uh, probably no need to howl. And then next turn, yeah. Opponent's dead on board. Should they have tapped my 6-5, I could have untapped it and still attacked. Hmm. Don't love this hand. I'm not doing anything till turn five. Yeah, this is a mulligan. 
If I had my two mana werewolf, this would have been potentially great, but... Alright, there we go. And then... It's between bottoming a land or a lunar frenzy. Either way, I'm going to be pretty all-in on this naturalist. Let's bottom the frenzy. Green white. Okay. There's small consideration for just passing and using the howl. Oh no, silver bolt, my only weakness. So let's see if a werewolf. So it doesn't kill the harrier necessarily if we save it with howl. So that's probably going to be the play. So ideally, they try to double block Harrier. It's a trap. Okay, let's keep on attacking, I suppose. And then I'm gonna try and set up an ambush with Howl. Also keeps a Moon Rager Slash, so should be pretty good. There goes my sighting. Wasn't really close to flashing it back anyway, so that's okay. Alright, so... Can start getting in for four, play a ruffian. What do we make of this attack? Um, it's relatively safe to just block with the Smasher, although I could block with a Beast. If we don't want to kill the Veteran. Which maybe that's better. Oh, did I not block last turn with uh, the Beast? My bad. Lustus is nice. Alright, um... Pretty close to killing them here, but... Start by attacking. They're probably gonna chump with a veteran. So I have double Moon Rager Slash at the ready. They cannot enable Coven just yet. Sunset Revelry. 
So they're not going to make any creatures. They're just going to draw a card and gain for life. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Don't really want to waste my slash to deny the card draw. Even though I could double slash the griff. Yeah, I mean, I could also just burn the curse of the Griff here. And then do that in their upkeep to get it to night time. But before they potentially draw a pump spell. Do I want to draw a card? I don't think so. Yeah, mob would have been good with all these veterans dying. So many burn spells. So I can attack with everyone, see what they do. Or I could go to nighttime right now. Sure. Now do I want to loot? Maybe discard play with fire? I mean, all these cards are great, really. Feels weird not to be looting, but normally it's always correct to do so. And then we'll just kill the unruly mob now. Opponents still gaining a bunch of life, but they're gonna run out of chum blocker soon. Sigarda Splendor, I don't think is gonna do much for them. Alright, smash. Double chumps. No card draw for you. And then the Celestis can make it so we switch back to nighttime next turn. Alright, it took a while because my opponent had so many chumpers from Veteran. But it was never in doubt. Ooh, turn to Naturalist. I'm keeping. We've got Tovalar, although it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get our creatures through for damage. So it might be a game where we ramp out some other werewolves first. They've got some good early defense. Ooh, nighttime. Don't mind if I do. Now, if they do have a double block, and I cannot really punish it here. 
They might also have a counter spell available. So what do I give them as a question? If I play Celestus, it's going to be easier to play two spells in the same turn, or play my Breaker. Could give him a Bird Admirer to still be mana efficient, and I mean it's a huge creature, so they probably have to counter it. All right. Intruder. Okay. Works for me. Evolving Wilds to get their second color, presumably. Blue-white. So this Bird Admirer is going to be very important. Ooh, even a Patrician Geist. But it stays nighttime, which is what matters. Oh wow. I mean, I would love to play Tovalar to start drawing with the Wing Shredder. How would they block if we attacked with the 4-6? Yeah, they could, like, triple block with Intruder, Angler, Larder, Zombie. I would get to kill Intruder plus Angler, maybe. So it might be better to just attack and then use Howl of the Hunt if they set up a triple block. If they take it, I could play Celestus. Although I guess if I attack with Shredder, I lose my Reach blocker for the Flyers. So it's a bit of a conundrum. I guess I could still howl to then ambush in the opponent's turn. I think I'm just gonna play Celestis and chill. Develop my mana. Keep my reach flyer or reach creature back. Like our late game is so powerful here that I just don't want to get into a racing situation if it's not necessary. Puppet Stitcher could be a problem, although they're down to one card in hand. Harrier. So I could double spell, would switch it back to daytime. I also have the option of attacking and using burn at instant speed thanks to the extra mana. But they're gonna put... I guess if they put Intruder on Lord I can burn the Patrician Geists. It's a pretty bold attack. Although I kind of like the gutsy attack in a way. And then if they don't make me burn, I could still go like 2-drop plus Dovalar or 2-drop pass with Howl up. I wish I had a Tovalar in play when making this attack, but what are you gonna do? All right, opponent does not want to deal with our lord. So what's the best I can do here? If I put Geist first and then Intruder, I kill both. And then I just go Tovalar 2-drop instead. That seems reasonable. Keep my Burn the Curse for Stitcher. Or do I want to Howl of the Hunts? I guess 2-drop Howl has its merit as well. Nah, I kind of want to be mana efficient. I don't think they're gonna play into the Howl necessarily. And with the Celestas I can always make in nighttime later. Mm, 
now I get to loot. Another bird admirer. Probably don't need another one. I really want land number four so I can either play breaker, burn or double spell. Alright, let's see if uh, Tovalar can run away with the game. Interesting attack from the Stitcher. I mean, all sorts of white combat tricks that they could have. Probably not worth blocking. And yeah, that's true, Tovalar with three wolves flips it to knights regardless of the opponent not casting anything. A relevant line of text. I'll loot. I want to keep the land. So now what do I get rid of? Harrier probably. Alright. Well, let's smash. This can be bad for me. So many things I can do, including pumping with Tovalar. Yeah, I'm not gonna pump here. It would cost me three mana to do so, which is not enough for anything else relevant. I'll just take my two cards, if possible. No ritual. Alright, fine. If you insist. And then I can howl in the opponent's turn. Probably untap Pestilent Wolf. Spread out to wealth. I think I'm gonna howl regardless of anything else attacking, because I just wanna empty my hand. Oh, I guess it transformed twice that turn, that's interesting. Okay. Step one, smash. Can I kill my opponents if I burn, let's say, the angler slash the stitcher? I mean, we're getting, we're getting very close. Let's just attack. The day and night cycle switches like at the beginning of your turn and then Tovalar transforms again in the upkeep. So it switched to day and then back to night. Alright. Yeah, our opponent's super dead here, no matter how you look at it. Mm, on the draw. Celeste certainly has been one of our best cards in the, the deck. So glad we picked one up. Probably the best archetype for it. Yeah, I mean, I just need a third land and we're good to go. Uh oh. Come on, land. Don't don't fail me now. Uh oh. Alright. So we're still in trouble. Adeline is not what I want to see, but 
if I play Bird Admirer, at least I get to eat a 1-1 one -one token. And then we can try to set up something. I think killing the token beats preventing damage, especially when uh, there's Coven on the line for the dual craft trainer. I could just pass transform and then have Howl of the Hunt and Moonrager Slash available. Uh, let's say they give that double strike, I'll have a 3-5. Could try and sneak in an attack, but that forces me to go with Howl, whereas now I also have the flexibility of maybe going for Frenzy, which may play out better. Could also slash the trainer. But we'll see if we can deal with Adeline first. Uh, they play creatures, so at least they don't have Coven enabled, since all their creatures are... Or they have two three-part creatures, I should say. So I don't think they have any attacks here. So if they just pass, I can slash the trainer. Keep playing big werewolves, I guess. That's fine. And a cavalier. Opponents empty handed. Alright, I think we can deal with this. Although I guess the Cavalier is not what we want to see when we have the Celestis and want to switch back and forth. Tovalar. Yeah, so if I let it go to nighttime, they get an extra counter. And then I could Howl of the Hunt to potentially ambush. Alternatively, I can just go Celestis plus Harrier. And then I still don't think they have any amazing attacks. Yeah, let's do that. Develop my mana. If they drew interaction here, I could be in trouble. And with Tovalar, it's gonna switch to nighttime automatically every turn. But the Cavalier's kind of problematic, I guess. If they can chain together multiple spells and switch it back to daytime. Which, with one card in hand, is not a, an immediate concern. What's going on here? I'm okay trading Ruffian for their creature here. They could double block and then eat to 1-1. One, one. Sure. Is that it? I get to loot as well. Not sure exactly what I'm looking for. I wouldn't mind an extra lands. And then ditch. Probably the Lunar Frenzy. Even though it's a nice trick to have. We already have Howl that kind of fills that role. And then... Don't want to switch it back to daytime. So I can play Bird Admirer, pass with Howl up. See if they do anything funny. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think I gotta slow roll my spells so the Cavalier doesn't get out of hand. Stinger could eventually turn into a problem. And then I think I want to slow roll Tovalar, although getting access to the pump ability could be nice. So maybe that's still worth it. And then the question is, do I keep playing out my lands or not? With Tovalar's ability, having more mana is not a bad thing, same with Harrier. So I think I can still afford to play a land. And keep Howl in hand. And then, uh, yeah, as soon as I can activate Harrier twice in one turn, we can do some serious damage. Or even just activate once and cast Howl. Stinger attacks. So they could pump it up to a 5 power first strike. Now double blocking with two shredders would technically be a fine block. I force them to tap out and then I can still howl to save my shredder, that seems fine. So I'm guessing the left one is put first, I hope. Ooh, give everyone haste. Uh, let's see. If I use Harrier on the 5-5, five five, this attacks, they would have to double block. And then I can still play Infiltrator at the very least. They take it, we get to draw a bunch. And this game's gonna be difficult to lose. And I'll keep hitting my land drops, because with Harrier we've got a good mana sink. Same with Tovalar. Right, they've got their own Harrier. It's not bad, but probably not good enough. Sadly, not going to be able to keep this without red. As good as turn to naturalists would be. Alright, this I can keep. And then probably bottom one of the two drops, and then the question becomes which one. We're on the draw, so most likely to be kind of on the defensive. Which makes me want to keep the Pestilent Wolf over the Harrier. Now with that being said, we're also going to curve into a 3-drop and eventually a nice 4-4. Those are all good blockers. So maybe I don't need the Death Touch and the late game ability on Harrier is going to be more impactful. Alright, opponent's getting the 2-3. And Graphkeeper, a pretty nice one to get back on turn 3, so opponent with a good start. Showing that Sifters can be reasonable under the right circumstances. So 
so I wouldn't mind finding a bird admirer at some point. Probably have to trade. Now there is an instant that lets the opponent draw and discard, so that could be a blowout. Candle trap, that's acceptable. So my guess is they have a counter spell for my siding. And then next turn we gotta hope to resolve Village Watch. And then we'll be well on our way to flashback siding. Alright, no counter. Maybe they had the counter, but they also had the bounce spell and they're going for the bounce spell. Or a barrage. Yeah, that card's good against red green. Probably want to play my haste enabler before my burly breaker. Although, decent chance of counter spell too. Intruder. Just to prevent a bit of damage. That's acceptable. So it is a race. And this burly breaker better stick the landing. Mm, that makes me dead if it weren't for the stop deck. Because, yeah, this would have been 8, 7 haste, 13, 2 damage short. But now I can smash and play this and technically be alive. Yeah, I mean, don't see another play available. Not the most mana efficient play, but it beats being dead on board. So now if they were to attack with everyone, can block a three powered creature to go to two, and then next turn they would have me dead. But hopefully we can just haste them to death with Burly Breaker. So I don't want them to be able to disturb so I'll just block like this. Alright, fair enough. A loyal Griff. A thing that puts me dead. Also, let the opponent double spell, so switch back to daytime. Doesn't give my other werewolves haste anymore. Does Moonrager Slash save me? Not quite. So close. Yeah, it was a tight race. So, not much I can do other than hope that they double block my Village Watch, I guess. I'll make him go for it. Yeah, even a Teferi. Very, very close. All right, on the play. No two drop, sadly, but can Mulligan. Gotta hope Tovalar gets us there. To Bird Admirer or to Tovalar? 
Strangely enough, hmm. Yeah, but they have vampire synergy stopping those with the admirers, nice. Um, although Tovalar might have a better chance of connecting with Howl next turn. Although I don't have to play it that way, I can take a slower approach, maybe just siding, and then eventually once the board lines up correctly, we can start drawing. Okay, Naturalist is good too. Opponents got three mana up, so what am I worried about? Like a Defenestrate, but wouldn't they have just killed my Bird Admirer then? So I think going Tovalar Smash is actually reasonable. And then next turn I could even double spell without worrying about switching back to daytime, because Tovalar will switch it back with three werewolves in play. Alright, so we're in business now. Feel free to double block. I actually could have played naturally pre combat too, but I think this is actually Maybe better even, because we get to blow out Howl of the Hunts. So it's daytime for a brief moment, unless they can kill Tovalar. Might be putting a few too many eggs in one basket. And the next turn, if Naturalist survives, I could play both. All right. That's fine. I wouldn't be able to attack with the Lord and play both unless I want to, you know, lose the Lord, which doesn't seem worth it. So we'll send these two. Unless I have lethal here, 11. I guess I probably just have lethal with Tovalar's pump, don't I? Four, I'll be able to pump for five with the extra mana. Yeah, I think they're just dead actually. Which is a shame, because I would have liked to draw more cards. But hey, winning is fun too. Alright, that was a fast one. Tovalar uncontested. Uh, let's see, on the play. Uh, curve is a little high. But, yeah, just takes like two lands and we're in business. Interesting decision which to drop to play first. Alright, gonna need that land now. Farmhands. Alright, I'll take a Naturalist. Would have been even better a little a little sooner here, but what are you gonna do? Back 
Bat Whisper. Okay. And a land. So could even think about attacking with Naturalist since, you know, it's still trading for relevant stuff. And then with four mana, could play either Ruffian or Siding. Or I could stem the bleeding, just play Burdenmire and pass. Although the opponent will be able to transform Farmhand. So maybe kind of forcing some trades here is a good thing. Because that will make it more difficult to keep Coven enabled for them. So let's send the team. And we'll see what they decide. Alright, trade there. Sure. And then I think siding over Ruffian. So now they can coven. Goodbye, siding. Probably weren't going to flash that back anyway. Slash is nice. If I attack with Pestilent Wolf, would they block with a Griff and allow me to give Death Touch? I guess that's a fine, fine sequence. The 4 4 would maybe attack too. Let's say they take 6, next turn they do have the ability to transform Farmhand. So the only way to prevent that would be killing the Interloper or the Farmhand itself with a Slash, or I could play Adm Admirer and then take the Lifelink hit, or potentially double block the Lifelinker. I think this is still okay. Opponent takes it. And then if they go for the obvious play of like covening the farmhand, I can even take the lifelink hits, we'll see. Alright, defenestrate. They had to kill my 3 drop instead of my 4-4. Four four. So they can lifelink the farmhand but they still need to keep something back. It's gonna be close. Keeping the token back. So they go up to seven. So I could kill them if they don't have anything else here. They would be at 7, I can kill their only blocker, attack for 8. That should do it. Attacking with all, having them chump and then burning their face would have the same result. Alright, close game. Showing the power of 2 drops. And there we go, got to 7 wins in the end with a werewolf deck. Crack some packs. Pack one, pick one. Maybe even the naturalist here. Don't love Wake the Slaughter. Uh, I guess maybe Castaway is a consideration too. Uh, not a huge fan of Vadric either, so it's like one of the black commons here. Yeah, Celestas also definitely performed. Probably go for Play with Fire. Or maybe the black-white uncommon is decent too. Alright, all the, the rare and the uncommons are great here. But Sentinel can be awesome in the late game if it gets to a board stall. And the Graveyard Hates that's kind of tacked on is actually super relevant too. Mm. 
unnatural growth is pretty difficult to cast, but the effect is powerful. This has to be my last Denik. Great card. Definitely first pick worthy there. Memory Deluge. Pretty powerful card draw effect. So probably at its best in like a blue-green, rampy flashback deck. All right, so yeah, that's going to wrap things up for today's stream. We will be back as usual on Tuesday with more Magic Arena. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.